forward. Okay, um, so a couple things I want to look at first. We'll get to the, the, the video next and we'll do the quizzes. Um, and you guys can see my screen, right? You can see the evidence here. Okay, so um, this handout that I found, um, one reason that uh, I was excited about it was because it actually uses one of the um, prompts that we wrote about the other day. So you remember the the, the cell phones and the, the Safer Kids Summit. And uh, so there's oh. this, um, it just has the one passage, but it's talking about how, you know, tweens preserve cell phones, right? So, and that was actually the one that I had chosen to, um, you know, support in my writing. Um, but what I really want to focus on, but because we're familiar with that, um, I thought it would be helpful just to review, you know, what evidence is, you know, what is the basic elements in evidence? What are we looking for? Um, and just kind of redefine or, or, or you know, get a little refresher here. So um, the handout here, I've already put this on Google Classroom, so it'll be available later. You guys can look at it. It's, it's, a, it's real simple. It's good stuff. Um, so, and it's like a whole, you know, instructional plan, everything. But first off, right, when we talk about evidence, um, what is evidence? What are we looking for? What do we mean by evidence? So um, here's our explanation. So all this falls under evidence, um, factual right? So truthful statements that cannot be denied, statements that the average person may know or which can be proven. So the sky is blue, right? That's a fact. Um, Germany lost World War II. That's a fact. Um, they are verifiable. Um, you know, if there's something that somebody states uh, that maybe you're not familiar with, um, so, you know, there's all we all have missing information. We don't know everything, um, but it's easy to prove, right? It, it's something that you could research, you could look up, uh, you could Google, uh, whatever it may be. Um, it is a st factual statement. Statistics and data, right? The other side, numerical facts. They're always presented in typically in numerical ways. Uh, raw numbers, percentages, fractions. Uh, it's usually you know this percentage of of these people, uh, you know, did this. Um, also verifiable. Um, and it's typically with statistics, um, it's when it gets to percentages and fractions, um, you know, you, you've done some calculations. Um, you know, the deaths in the Civil War or World War One. that's also a statistic. Um, but uh, that's, you know, lends itself more to just being factual, right? When you get into statistics and data, um, you know, sometimes that can be manipulated um, or, or used in ways that is not, you know, is irrelevant to uh, the whatever claims are being made. So that's something to keep in mind. But again, it's stuff that is, is numerical. It's typically also verifiable. Um, examples or anecdotes, right? So this is also evidence, but I've mentioned this, right? It typically only deals with one scenario, or one situation. So real life situations, events or experiences that illustrate a position, anecdotal stories that help explain an author's claim. Um, and, you, you know, they're fine. Uh, you can use anecdotes, you can use examples, but it is not necessarily enough information. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you can you can point out that uh, you know you had a a certain type of experience, but that does not speak for everyone, um, and you can't assert that. Um, but you can use them, and they can also help sort of explain, is particularly if you have other facts and data to go along with that, a, a personal experience or, or or somebody that you you know uh, know that went through something similar. Uh, expert testimony. So probably generally speaking, uh, now they have this kind of in a hierarchy, um, but here I would say expert testimony probably is a little more reliable than an anecdote. Um, so, you know, they have observations or conclusions of someone who is considered highly knowledgeable um, and because he or she is an expert in a particular field of study or occupation, someone who has 
firsthand knowledge and experience. Okay, so if um, what you're, you know, uh, if you're reading a passage, and and we, we've we encountered this almost everything that we've read, uh, particularly when it comes to like the stuff with you know kids and cell phones or kids on the internet and things like that, um, they'll have like a psychologist. Um, who's, uh, you know, done some, some research or something, and they speak to that um, strong, right? It, particularly when you have an expert that deals with that. Um, you know, if you wanted to ask, I'm not an expert, um, but, you know, when it comes to history, that's, you know, my field. Uh, it, you know, probably better to come to me with a history question than Rachel. It's going to be better to go to Rachel with a math question, right? So that's that's how experts work, right? Um, logical reasoning. So here's what we're going to deal with a lot today is those, um, those faults in reasoning and different types of these logical fallacies and faulty reasoning. So an ex explanation which draws conclusions that the reader can understand a discussion which helps the reader understand or make sense out of facts or examples offered, right? So it's reasoning through something similar to an anecdote where you're telling a story, but here it's more maybe of an, an analogy, um, but it has to be sound reasoning. And then finally, you know, the last type of evidence here, and we, we talked about all of these, um, is an emotional appeal. Right. So use of sympathy, fear, loyalty, uh, you know, whatever it may be, anger um, to persuade manip and, and manipulate the reader's emotions alone. That's a bad idea. Right. And, and we'll, we'll see that like the, um, uh, the, the, the one passage where the lady was saying, you know, you don't want to give your kids a cell phone because they'll be bullied. Or do you want your child to become the bully, right? So that there's an emotional appeal there. Um, they're usable when you have other evidence. So if you, you were kind of using that as a conclusion, you know, you were you were writing your way out of the uh, of the passage uh, and sort of you know leaving the readers with something to think about, right? We've talked about this. That's one way to do it. An emotional pill is good. Give them something to think about. Um, but you'd want to have other evidence, facts and data uh, before uh, you make an emotional pill. Uh, and you would not want that to just stand alone. Okay, so that's the idea there. Um, so here in this worksheet, um, we're just going to drop down to the bottom because they have filled in. Now, I mentioned this was the um, one uh, woman who had written, you know, she was pro cell phone. Uh, and you remember, you know, she talked about uh, things like 60% of children ages 8 to 12 already have one. Um, and I kind of mentioned that's that's a bandwagon. Um if, if that was to stand alone, it's a statistic, right? It's a good statistic, um, but it doesn't necessarily support her claim that all kids should have cell phones or, you know, you should uh, consider giving your, your, your child at the age of 10 a cell phone just because other children have them. Um, and then, you know, so you remember reading through these, uh, there are some other um, points in there. So just a second, I saw Nilda come in and then she disappeared. Um, Okay. Uh, and then, you know, psychologists, that would be a, um, well, like we said before, an ethical appeal, but that's expertise, right? That's, that's, that's an expert in the field. What I want to show you here, and unless it's uh, in the next table, we actually have this filled out where they use examples from that um, uh, passage and show you directly which type of evidence that is. <clears throat> so factual information, right? Truthful statements that cannot be denied. Cell phone usage among tweens has grown rapidly. Um, that is something that you could verify. That's a statement that is not, um, you know, it doesn't lack uh, logic or reasoning. Um, it, it's pretty general statement, right? But you can obviously assert that and it, it, it's, it's factual. Uh, statistical information, right? New numbers, they offer that the survey found that 60% of children ages 8 to 12 already have cell phones, right? Which we've already talked about. You see numbers, that's typically going to be statistical. Fractions, percentages, what have you. Um, 
you know, it's fine as evidence goes, but remember how they use it is also relevant. Uh, examples or anecdotes, right? So those real life situations uh, or, or creating a scenario. So they use the example there, picture the following. You told your fourth grader that you would pick her up after school, but you are stuck in traffic. So it's anecdotal. Um, weak on its own, but useful if you're helping to explain something. Um, that was a little bit of an emotional appeal too. You could see that, right? Sort of, uh, th there's there's an idea there of of sort of um, evoking fear, right? That your 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 daughter, your child is going to be out there on the playground, left alone. Um, so there's a little bit of a twofold there. But the use of anecdotes will often do that. They can also appeal to emotion. Expert testimony, right? Here we go again. When you have experts, so they're uh, uh, citing psychologists tell us that the period between ages 10 and 12 is a time to teach children about responsibility uh, and to give them opportunities to earn our trust. Um, so there is an expert testimony. That's something that you know you could point out uh, that they use that. Um, you know, psychologists, we had uh, several, it seems like it's always psychologists and these expert testimonies that we come across. Um, some of that's because of the, the types of readings that we've, we've seen. Uh, but there, you know, you see that um, when they, particularly if they mention the profession of the person uh, and they offer a, a quote from them a lot of times, this one was a little different because it's just sort of uh, more general talking about psychologists. But a lot of times they'll talk about a space, you know, a specific professor or a specific researcher, and they will quote them. That's all expert testimony. Logical reasoning. So here we go again, right? So an explanation that draws conclusions that the reader can understand, but it has to be logical, right? It has to use the correct uh, um, sort of pathway for that, and that's what we'll deal with for the rest of the, the class. Um, so their example there, right? Providing a 10 year old with a cell phone offers an ideal way to achieve these goals. So, um, you know, talking about earlier independence, safety, things like that. So reasoning through that, right? By, uh, you know, if, you, if you're concerned about your child's safety, if you're concerned about your child's independence and wanting them to make, you know, uh, 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 develop their independence, uh, then, giving them a cell phone will help with that, right? So there's a you know logical statement, that's logical reasoning. And then finally, the emotional appeal, right? So here they use providing a 10 year old with a cell phone gives parents peace of mind. So here the emotional appeal is, is reducing stress, right? Reducing anxiety, but that's still an emotional appeal. Um, so, there's those types of evidence to continue to look for. And um, like I said, I put that up on Google Classroom. So you can review that. I think that's a, uh, these are really good, straightforward explanations of each one. Um, and that's what you should be looking for in your extended response. Um, so um, when we work through that tomorrow, you know, those are the ones, a kind of checklist that you want to think about when you come across claims uh, in writing. Okay, so let's switch gears and we're gonna talk about logical fallacies. And it's basically the same thing as um, uh, faulty reasoning. Um, so got about a seven minute video here, more explanations on those ones that are commonly seen. Um, some of these will certainly be more relevant. Some of them we're probably not gonna to see too much, but um, it is a possibility. Um, so let's take a look here. And so all of you can see the video, right? And more importantly, please let me know if you cannot hear the video. Hey guys, welcome to this video on logical fallacies. When creating a logical argument, there are many different aspects that have to come together to ensure that your argument is sound and does not contain any flaws. One of these aspects is avoiding what we call logical fallacies. A logical fallacy is an error of reasoning that will weaken your argument and, in most cases, undermine it completely. 
Today, we're going to look at the 10 most common logical fallacies. Circular reasoning. Circular reasoning or circular argument is when the argument is restated rather than proven. In other words, instead of explaining why something is or isn't true, you just fall back on the original argument as proof. Here's an example. Opium is sleep-inducing because it has a sleep-inducing quality. You haven't really explained why opium is sleep-inducing, you've just confirmed that it is in fact sleep-inducing. A typical formula for circular reasoning is A is true because B is true, and B is true because A is true. Another example of this would be the wind is invisible because I can't see it, and I can't see it because it's invisible. When constructing an argument, make sure to avoid this kind of logic by being as specific as possible about your proofs. Hasty generalization. So just to stop there and, and fill that in a little bit, remember um, a lot of times it'll be, it might be covered up a little bit because they use a different term for the same thing, right? So that was the thing uh, that you, you want to, if, if they're making a statement like that, um, you know, uh, like opium is sleep inducing uh, because it makes you drowsy. Right. So that's that's the same. That's still that circular reasoning, but they inserted some different words. That's how you're usually going to see it. It's not going to be so obvious that it could be. But most of the time, it probably won't be so obvious where they're basically saying, you know, this is right because it's right or, you know, this is wrong because it's wrong. They will, you know, manipulate it some by using other words. So just keep that in mind. If you see other uh, word choices. See if it if it's still the same definition. That's circular reasoning. A hasty generalization is when someone makes a sweeping statement without considering all of the facts. For example, if a man walks through a town for the first time and sees 10 people, all of them children, he might conclude that all the town's residents are children. This argument fails to explore all of the data surrounding the topic and attempts to suggest a conclusion based on this limited knowledge. This is also known as overgeneralization and is best avoided by exploring and presenting every aspect of an argument's topic. Slippery slope. A sl yeah, so overgeneralization, hasty generalization, um, a lot of times that'll be uh, stereotypes. We talked about those. Um, and yeah, so it's possible that you will see that um, more likely to see circular logic when it comes to, you know, your, your passages, they, there may be, uh, hasty generalizations made where they, they're pointing out, uh, the other thing to look for, right. With generalizations, if they're using those absolute terms, if they're, if they're, um, uh, qualifying their statements with things like all, never, ever, right. Absolute terms, look for those. Uh, and that's, you know, we're always questioning what we're reading. And that should be one of those things that you question. Can you really say, you know, all people over 70 are bad drivers? Um, you know, st stuff like that, which is also a stereotype of, of older drivers. Um, so look for those terms. Slippery slope is a conclusion based on the premise that one small step will lead to a chain of events resulting in some significant event, which is usually negative. In other words, if we allow A to happen, then an unwanted Z will eventually happen, which means that A should not happen. Here's an example. If you don't study on Saturdays, your grades will suffer. If your grades suffer, you won't graduate school with high honors, which means you won't get a good job. Since you won't have a good job, you'll have to live on the streets. This implies that not studying on Saturdays will result in eventually being homeless. The problem here is that the main issue is being covered by extreme hypotheticals with no real proof to support the argument. Straw man. A straw man argument, argument is, is a technique where someone, someone distorts an opponent's claim so that it's easier to refute or where someone tries to refute a point someone made by giving a rebuttal to a point they did not make. For example, if someone said schools should be more lenient with standardized testing, a straw man reply to this would be, if we stop giving tests in schools, we are going to raise an ignorant generation that won't have the skills to live in the real world. This fallacy serves to undermine an honest and rational debate with unfounded claims. Ad hominem. And um, so that was one that we talked about a little bit uh, last week. And 
Yeah, so you have to be careful to, to see, okay, if somebody is making a claim, are they addressing the problem? Um, and is it, you know, logical? Um, and they're a little bit like slippery slope, right? So if we give all our, our 10 year olds uh, cell phones, they're all gonna become bullies, right? So there's a, there's a bit of a slippery slope idea in there, but also it could, it could be seen as a straw man. But it's basically, uh, when, just, just like she said, it's manipulating the argument. Uh, so you're answering the question you want to answer or rebuttal rather than directly addressing the, the 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 claim or the argument. So, and a lot of times it's it's you know it's bombastic. It's it's making a, a greater claim uh, about uh, the argument. Ad hominem is an attack on a person's character or personal attributes in order to discredit their argument. For example, a mother might reject the judgments of a male pediatrician because he has never been a mother and couldn't possibly understand the child's situation. She has done nothing to directly oppose the doctor's argument, but has instead tried to undermine his judgment without actually having to engage with it. False dichotomy. Uh, a false dichotomy. Ad hominem gets a little tricky. Uh, it's something you have to be careful with, but like, so you could see where that will come into play with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the expert, um, you know, uh, appeals to uh, ethics and as far as like using an expert uh, idea. That can become a problem because um, they may not actually be an expert. Um, so, you know, with the COVID pandemic, uh, th there was all these videos online about these people, you know, who, you know, worked in, in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, and made claims about, you know, the effectiveness of the vaccine, or it was going to kill all of us and, and things like that. Um, they weren't experts. They, yeah, some of them, uh, yeah, may have been, you know, a doctor. Uh, they didn't necessarily work in immunology or virology or pharmaceuticals. Um, or sometimes they were like pharmaceutical sales reps or, you know, worked on that side of pharmaceuticals. But you throw up, you know, especially with those types of videos, that's, that's what YouTube's great for, right? Uh, you know, so-and-so worked in, you know, this, this kind of general field of, of pharmacology for, you know, 20 years. Um, but then you find out, it's like, okay, well, they didn't do anything specifically with this type of technology or this type of medication. So that doesn't make them an expert, um, which is a little different than ad hominem where you just attack the character of the person regardless if they're an expert or not right so it, even if you know just that's a perfect example there you know he is a doctor you know he's a pediatrician so he treats boys and girls uh he's done that his entire life um but you know attacking him just because he's a a, a man treating a a girl that's a problem right that's not relevant um, he's still an expert. Um, sometimes, you know, the other types of character attacks, like, uh, you know, the person might be a, you know, phenomenal psychologist, um, in their respective field and have all this ton of research, but they may have also had a sort of past or they may, you know, have a problem with addiction or something. And, you know, saying it's like, well, you're just a drug addict. Uh, that's an ad hominem attack. It does not serve, uh, you know, it doesn't refute what they're saying at that time as an expert. ...or false dilemma occurs when an argument presents two points while disregarding or ignoring others in order to narrow the argument in one person's favor. This is also known as either or fallacy. Here are a couple of examples. You are either for us or against us. I thought you were a good person, but you didn't donate to the charity last year. There are only two options given when there are really more options available. This attempts to drive the argument in a direction where only one specific answer can be given in order to incriminate the opposing party. Appeal to emotion. 
An appeal to emotion is when a writer or speaker uses emotion-based language to try to persuade the reader or listener of a certain belief or position. An appeal to emotion generally follows the logical form, X is true, think of how sad you'll be if it's not true, or think of how happy you'll be if it's true. Example. I deserve, I deserve a second chance to submit my assignment. This past week was so busy for me. I had football practice late every night. I had tons of homework in all my other classes, and my girlfriend and I just broke up. In general, what someone perceives to be unfair, how someone is feeling, or even things that someone might perceive to be moral or immoral do not carry much weight for making an objective argument. Equivocation. A fallacy of equivocation is when an argument... So, you know, we just saw that Appeal to motion can also be a logical fallacy. Um, it can be used as evidence, but it's the weakest type of evidence. Um, and it's not necessarily a logical fallacy. Sometimes if you have other things to support it, if you're you know, making a statement about something, but standing alone, no go. It is not a good way to present an argument just by making an emotional appeal. You have to have other information there is presented in an ambiguous, double-sided way, making the argument misleading. This is also known as a double-speak fallacy. Here's an example. Hot dogs are better than nothing. Nothing is better than hamburgers. Therefore, hot dogs are better than hamburgers. The word nothing in this case is used to refer to both not anything and all things. It's important to precisely define your words and be consistent with their usage. Bandwagon appeal. A bandwagon appeal is an appeal that presents the thoughts of a group of people in order to persuade someone to think the same way. It argues that one must accept or reject an argument based on peer pressure. Here are two examples. Many people buy extended warranties. Therefore, it is wise to buy them. My family holds this as truth. Therefore, everyone who disagrees is simply wrong. These are not strong arguments because they have a basis in fact. False analogy. The false analogy, false analogy also, also known as a weak analogy, is when two things that are unlike are being compared based on a trivial similarity in order to prove a point. For example, people are like dogs. They respond best to discipline. This is an absurd analogy that attempts to correlate people and dogs based on one minor similarity. I hope that this video was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel for further videos. See you guys next time. So of course, we'll see some of those more than others, right? Um, <clears throat> bandwagon appeal, appeals to emotion, uh, circular logic um, possibility. Um, so, you know, false dichotomy you might see, uh, it's it's probably unlikely that you'll see a lot of those. Um, but certainly the ones that we've kind of hammered on here as far as emotional appeal, false analogies is a possibility. Uh, and then there's also that sort of irrelevant evidence um, where they can throw something at you that's not necessarily relevant. Uh, it looks good, you know, it might be a statistic, um, but does it really speak to the, um, the, the, the argument that they're making and the claim that they're making. So, um, yeah, so I've got some quizzes here. So as you see, they're just, there's not long passages. They're just one individual question. I'm hoping it's not time because it's, it's got a little timer on each side there. Um, so when I click on them, um, hopefully we'll get at least some time to, to read the question and answer. I have not gone through these, um, so we'll just see how the answers go um, and see if there's any additional um, you know, suggestions that they offer when we answer them. So uh, we're going to start with Grace for number one here. Why don't you read that and answer it for us? Okay. I guess I should buy my I guess I should buy my 12 year old daughter an iPhone. Everyone at her new school has one and I want her to fit in with the other kids. A appeal to false authority. B bad wagon. C either or and D, slippery slope. Okay. <laughs> oh.
um, C. Bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's a little different. Um, all right. So I guess it's, all right. Same thing. Oh, it's just gonna have a show the answers. It looks like here. So we will show. Oh. Here we go. Yeah, so bandwagon, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, I don't th think it's time. So, and now that we're in it, I think that's the way it'll work here. Uh, yeah, so remember the other way to look at bandwagon appeal is if your mother ever told you, you know, if everyone jumps off a bridge, are you going to do it too? Uh, right? The, those bandwagon ideas. We, we, you know, growing up, you know, it's like, oh, mom, you know, all, all my friends have these Nikes or whatever. You know, there's a bandwagon element to that. So, particularly when you say something like, you know, every kid has this or that bandwagon appeal. Uh, let's see, Christiana, you want to try this one? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I got to hide answers. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read that one. We'll answer it. I see now I'll have to hide the answer before I move to the next slide. Uh, so it said, my opponent raises a good point, but can we really trust him? I mean, he moved to this town only two years ago and everyone knows that his wife left him. Um, so that was an ad hominem attack, right? So uh, they 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 assert that this person makes good points, but their argument is whether or not you could trust him is that he just only recently moved the town and his wife left him, right? Talking about character, talking about their you know history or what have you, does that really talk about you know does that have really anything to do with the points that he's making? No. So that's an ad hominem attack. So sorry about that. Okay. I'll hide the answers. Should move over to the next one here. All right, Christiana, back to you again. Try this one. Um, Oh, uh, is it a hasty generalization? I think it's going to be an ad hominem attack again. Let's see. Yeah, so ad hominem. So <clears throat> what the point is making there is, right, so this person's like, oh, you know, what would you know about labor laws? You don't even have a job. Um, well, that person might be a, you know, studying law. Right. They might be studying labor law. They might have, you know, studied labor in, you know, history or something like that. So that's again, that's an attack on their character. Um, and it's not necessarily related to the, the idea. Right. So, you, you know, it's it's ad hominem. I'm attacking the character of the person, not necessarily what they know, um, not necessarily their experience, not necessarily their expertise. All right, so hide. And our next question, Sasha Gay, you want to try that one? <clears throat> if I don't take this AP class, then I won't do well on the exam. If I don't do well on the AP exam, then I can't get into a good college. If I can't get into a good college, then I'll never get a good job. If I can't get a good job, then I'm going to have to live in my parents' basement forever. Yes, I'll sign up for the AP class. Is it slippery slope? I believe it's slippery slope. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, so slippery slope, right? And you could tell too because there's this there's this progression, right? So a lot of times that you you might see that kind of idea. If I don't do this then this will happen and then this will happen and then this will happen, right? So just like a slope, uh, this cascading of, of events. Um, <clears throat> and you, the, another way to look at it, right? Eliminate everything in between. So you start with one. If I don't take this AP class, then I, don't, then I won't do well on the exam. And then look at the very last one. If I can't get a good job, then I'm going to have to live in my parents' basement forever. 
right? You see this huge jump between the two. <laughs> so um, that's another way to, to identify slippery slope, right? Is these huge sort of uh, drops between one idea to the last. All right, so hide. All right, now I got this figured out. So go to Grace. Grace, what's this deal? I know the professor saw the bridges of Madison County was smarmy trash and lacked any artistic worth, but, but I still think he's wrong. After all, it was on the very seller list for over 10, over 100 weeks. I know the professor solid. Hey. They know the professor said the bridges of Madison County was smelly <laughs> trash. Oh, okay. Hey. Hey. So I think it's bandwagon argument. Let me see. Okay. I'm not real sure about this one either. Okay, yeah. So the idea there is that um, uh, that the, it was on the bestseller list for over 100 weeks. So the bandwagon point of that is that it was really popular, right? So it sold a bunch of, of copies. Um, so that in turn must mean that it's good, right? So if everybody liked it, it must have artistic worth. Um, so that, that's the bandwagon uh, idea there. Um, so the, the other thing there, you know, it talks about like a red herring, that's sort of like a distraction, distracting people from the main point. Um, but yeah, so it, it's basically, you know, say, same thing, you think about popular movies. Uh, you know, maybe you're deciding to go to see a movie one weekend. Uh, and so let's say it's like it's been out for two or three weeks and uh, you're thinking, well, I wonder if this is any good. And so you, you look and it's like, oh, wow, you know, it did uh, 200 million in the box office in the first week. Um, you know, that gives you an impression that it must be really good because a bunch of people went out to see it. Um, but that necessarily, it, you know, doesn't mean that it could be complete garbage, right? It's just the fact that people went out to see it uh, doesn't mean necessarily that's any good. That's that bandwagon idea. Everybody's doing it, so I should do it too. All right. And next one, uh, Christiana. What do we think of ad hominem attacks? Is it last one? Yes, right. So it's an attack on the person, uh, not the argument. Ad hominem is Latin for to the person. Uh, so you're directing your, your rebuttal towards the person that made it, not the quality of their argument or their evidence or their expertise, but the person, all right? So that should be, yeah. So ad hominem attack is an attack on the person. That is something that you might find in your passages if, um, you know, they are mentioned, you know, so you know, this politician or, you know, this mayor said this, but, you know, we can't trust him because he's, you know, whatever. Uh, he drives a Chevy, you know, whatever it is. Uh, that's that's attack on, on the person, not on their argument or their ideas. Oh, I did it again. No, don't look. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> okay, well, I'll answer this one. So if you let, if I let you go to the bathroom pretty soon, everybody will want to go to the bathroom. This is an example of slippery slope, right? If I let one person do something, everybody will want to do it. So that idea, again, you know, just this going from one thing to another, it's a slippery slope. Um, so hide the answers. Okay. Sasha Gay, let's try this again. Good, good morning. Have you gotten over the grocery mood you were in? Um, that one might be a little tricky. <laughs> uh, is it a loaded question? I think it might be. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> it's a loaded question. Um, that's kind of an interesting one. Uh, you know, uh, other types of loaded questions, you know, put you in a position. I, I think a better, better example of a loaded question is it puts you in a position where you have to answer something controversial um, or it opens up like you ever heard the term opening up a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's. Um, it might be a little bit off topic. And what it does is it, 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 it is opening up the argument to all kinds of other scenarios and, and, and things like that. So, you know, you, you might hear that from time to time. It's like, that's a loaded question. It, it may be relevant, but you're putting a lot of pressure on whoever you're asking that statement or, or whoever you're asking that question to, to answer something that may be, you know, put them in a bad position. All right, so Grace. Right answer. You. I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grace, you wanna try that one? Okay. <laughs> The mind is like a knife cutting through difficult problems, but just as too much cutting does a knife, so too much education does the mind. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, so it's, I think it's probably a false analogy. Let's take a look. Oh, there's a little explanation button here. Let's see if they actually, no, it's, it's not working. Okay. So, um, right. So they're, they're make they're an analogy. Like we said, is, is, is comparing something to something else. It's sort of like a, a metaphor or a simile. Uh, but it, it's, you know, so there, the analogy is the mind is like a knife. Uh, and then it's, but the false analogy is right. So the mind is like a knife cutting through difficult problems. Okay. That's a decent analogy, but what they're saying, uh, what makes it false is it says just as too much cutting dulls a knife. So too, so too much education dulls the mind. So the, the false analogy is there is if I, you know, use my kitchen knife every day, right? I'm, I'm dicing peppers and onions and, and, and doing all the stuff with it. Eventually it gets dull, but your mind works the opposite, right? The more you use your mind, the sharper it gets. So there's that false analogy. Sure. You can make this analogy that the mind is like a knife cutting through problems, keeping it sharp, but the more you use it, that's the false part of the analogy. The more I use it, uh, the dollar is going to get that you can't compare knives and mines the same way. All right. So I'll hide the answer. Hopefully that kind of clarifies that. Right. And okay. Christiana, give that one a try. Uh, Mm. 
The second one. At hominem, it's the third. It's 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 <laughs> it's a hasty journal. Yeah, say. hasty journal. Uh, take a look at the answer real quick. Yeah. So, <laughs> right is is two courses enough to judge an entire university, right? Mm. So there's the idea of of, of overgeneralizing. Uh, so the two courses I took at UF were not very interesting. I don't think it's a very good university. Um, that's a pretty hasty journalization, right? You're barely dipping your toes in the water there and, and determining that it's, you know, a, a, a bad university based on two experiences. Um, so yeah, make it a hasty journalization. All right. And, oh, okay, good. I covered it up again. Uh, let's see, Sasha Gay, you want to try that one? A driver with a New York license plate cuts you off, off in traffic. You decide that that all New York drivers are terrible drivers. Stereotyping. I, that should be stereotyping. It's kind of interesting that they put hasty journalization and stereotyping in there because stereotyping is pretty much a hasty journalization. But, uh, see... <laughs> Don't care for that question because that's a little bit of a stereotype, right? Um, but I think, you know, you're on the right track there because it is largely the same thing. Um, I think stereotyping, they're probably looking for a little more specific groups of people, uh, you know, not just New York drivers, but um, uh that is, yeah, you're on the right track. I would give you credit for that. Um, a hasty journalization, same thing though, right? From one experience, from, from a simple experience, I draw a conclusion about every, you know, every group of people or every situation based on that one experience. Uh, Ohio drivers uh, get bad, uh, get a bad rap outside of the state. I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, I grew up in West Virginia and I grew up my whole life uh, believing that Ohio drivers were bad. And why is that? Because a lot of times, if you're on the interstate driving through West Virginia, you know, people are traveling from Ohio, going on vacation, stuff like that. And it, 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 there's just this kind of idea. It's like they always drive too slow in the left lane. You know, they, they, they hold up traffic and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's a hasty journalization made on, you know, one individual experience or maybe a couple uh, experiences. Okay, and Grace, give that one a try. Ooh, here we go, that's a little different. <clears throat> what is logical fallacy? I'm going to the premise next. See? Right. An argument that contains a mistake in reasoning. Uh, let's make sure our answer is correct. Yeah. So uh, logical fallacy is like we're talking about here. There's something illogical about it or it lacks reasoning. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Um, there's something fishy about it, something that's questionable about it. That's logical fallacy. All right. And Christiana, give that one a try. Why is this elephants are big? Some boys are big, therefore some elephants. <laughs> 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 the question is really funny. Okay. So... Yeah, it's a good one. Not sure. 
it's it's only if you just the larger problem we see through to get on the subject together. Hmm. I think I had a Is it? Is it a third one? Third one? I'm a little curious too. I think that's the it. It's one? either that or oversimplifies. Let me see. Oh no! See, I was a little concerned about that because it's not necessarily you know all elephants are big. So A is true. Some boys are big. Okay, so I guess and B is true. So A plus B must be true. So yeah, so think about those kind of logical statements. You know, if A is true and B is true, A plus B must be true. So um, just think about the way it's organized. All elephants are big. Some boys are big. Therefore, some boys are <laughs> elephants. Um, so there's that logical fallacy there. Um, Okay. Yeah. I was a little curious how they were going to go with that. Um, you might run into that, right. Where they offer you a, that faulty reasoning where, uh, you know, this is true and this is true. So this is true. Um, so be careful and look for those as well. <clears throat> okay. And grace. Give that one a try. Hmm. Which logical fallacy will be used in the following advertisement? Advertisement. Advertisement. LeBron James advertising. Is what? Gatorade. Yeah, Gatorade. Oh. oh. First authority. First Delma. First course. Hey, it's only three. So, logical uh, fallacy. Um, We'll be using the full address. I'll go for it. Let's see here. Yeah. So um, that they're, they've, they've kind of given it a different term, but remember we talked about um, uh, <clears throat> uh, appeals by celebrity. Um, right. So uh, just because a famous person is telling you to do something, you should do it. Um, yeah. So that's, a, that's, that's the same thing. It's just given a different name. So false authority. I can't remember. I think it was appealed to. I'll have to go back and take a look. But remember, we use Miley Cyrus for that uh, because, you know, Miley Cyrus is, doesn't eat gluten. Uh, we all shouldn't eat gluten. Right. So it, it's that uh, appeal by celebrity. Um, but I think that it was another there was another term uh, I think they use. But, yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah. You know, LeBron James <clears throat> is an athlete. He's out there. Um, so he's used a lot in advertisement. Uh, I think he actually does advertise for Gatorade. Right. So should you drink Gatorade because LeBron James drinks it? No. Um, you know. You drink it because you like it or you know you need the the electrolytes or whatever it is but yeah so that's a false authority it's the same idea that we looked at before all right <clears throat> and christiana give that one a try oh it's a little picture hope you guys can see that. okay what's going on with this image Oh, cat have four legs. I have four legs. Therefore, I'm a cat. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Uh, okay. <laughs> Is 
Vou botar ela aí, deixa eu me fosse. Eu tenho que fazer isso. Ah. Hum. Is it? Ah. Oh. Is it the second one or the last one? Uh, I, I think it's going to be over generalization. Let's take a look. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now here, th this, this is a little bit confusing because they use that same, if A is true and B is true, A plus B is true, right? Mm -hmm. So we saw that before. If all cats have four legs, um, I have four legs. Therefore, I am a cat, right? Yep. So, um, so <laughs> Sure. That's again one of those kind of test taking tips, you know, test taking skills. Uh, make sure that you're you're thinking a lot about the the, the choices that they give you, because um, I you could just as easily have been like, you know, if A is true, B is true. That that's what I was looking at. I'm like, well, what would be the next uh, best, you know, uh, guess there? It's like, okay, well, this little dog's making a generalization because all cats have four legs. Then every animal must have. Uh, the, every animal with four legs must be a cat. So that's an overgeneralization. So good job pointing that out. Yeah, these are pretty good. Uh, oh, we got Marilyn Monroe. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that that well. I'll read it. Um, so Sasha Gay, this one's going to be for you. And it says, Marilyn Monroe says, yes, I use luster cream shampoo. So that must be an old advertisement from the 50s or 60s. So Marilyn Monroe uses luster cream shampoo. Sasha Gay, what type of fallacy is this? False authority. False authority, right? So just like LeBron James drinking Gatorade, um, you know. Now, of course, it's um, we're always going to see celebrities uh, endorsing things. Um, but obviously that doesn't make him an expert. That just means that there's somebody that uses that product. Um, same way, you know, just because Molly Cyrus doesn't eat gluten doesn't mean that I shouldn't eat gluten. Um, it, it's, it, you know, it's, the, the thing today about celebrities that really gets me, you know, a lot of people will point out, uh, you know, they express their, their political opinions quite a bit. Um, and of course, they're free to do that. We are a free country, you know, under the first amendment, you have that freedom of speech and everybody gets up in arms because, oh, you know, so-and-so said this about the president or so-and-so said that about the president. What do they know? They're a celebrity. That's like, yeah. Why do you get mad about that? <laughs> so many people get upset because somebody says something about somebody else. It's like, but why do you let that bother you? Um, so yeah, the, you know, it's, it's they have a right to say it, obviously. Um, <laughs> you know, some are a little more uh, in tune with what's going on than others. Um, so you know, some of them might be a little more reliable than others, but that necessarily doesn't mean that you should follow their opinion. Um, and that goes for you know whatever they say, whoever it is. Um, so, you know, th that's the other kind of irony about that. I see this a lot, you know, because this celebrity says something about, you know, this politician, what do they know? They're a celebrity and that same person will turn around and, uh, support, you know, celebrity B because they said something different about that same person, but they're still a celebrity. So, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of being wishy-washy there. All right, so yeah, so that's a false authority just because Marilyn Monroe uses luster cream shampoo. Maybe, you know, that doesn't mean you should use it as well. Okay, uh, all right. Grace, give that one a try. Okay. That drink everybody knows. Appeal to tradition? Uh, probably bandwagon. Let's see. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, again, you know, the drink everybody knows. A little less straightforward than it's like everybody drinks this. Um, but still, it, it, there's a bandwagon kind of idea there. It's like, oh, yeah, everybody knows Coca-Cola, so you should drink Coca-Cola. All right. Uh, Christiana. Ooh, that one's tough to read. Um, 
so this says just like grandma used to make i'm having trouble i can't really it's weird i'm it won't let me zoom in let me see if i can change the size here or something now All right, so it says, just like grandma used to make, uh, heirloom recipes. Um, so it's an ad for like, uh, probably like a cookbook, I believe, or maybe some type of cooking. Uh, something. Let's see if you can pick that out, Christiana. What kind of fallacy is being used? Um, appeal to tra tradition. <laughs> now, see, I think this is an appeal to tradition. I mean, that's another mm -hmm. fallacy that we didn't really talk about. But yeah, good job. Um, right, so the appeal to tra tradition is sort of like, well, it's always been this way. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be this way. Um, that's another way to sort of look at an appeal to tradition or, you know, it's also sort of an, an emotional appeal if it kind of harkens back to your youth or, you know, a memory, if it's, an, if it's evoking a memory. Uh, but, but most importantly there, yeah, if it's just, uh, if it's all, you know, you'll hear that sometimes, that sort of logical fallacy where it's like, well, um, you know, why do we do it this way? It's like, well, because we've always done it this way. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right. That doesn't mean that we should continue to do it that way. That's an appeal to tradition. Okay. Sasha Gay. Ah, it's another one. Okay. I'll try to, it's an ad. I can't zoom in to see, let me see, it says tobacco first, what's next? Um, start by removing the branding from cigarettes and where will it end? So that is what it says uh, under that um, main title there. Sasha Gay, what kind of fallacy is being used there? Slippery slope. I believe it's going to be slippery slope. Let's see. Yeah. Right. So there's another indicator, right? Oh, you know, so <laughs> I think the idea here, which is really weird. Um, so talking about removing the labeling, uh, the packaging from cigarettes. Uh, I think that's the idea there. So you just have like this generic, you know, print where you don't have like a lot of flashy packaging and stuff to make them less appealing. So this is probably an ad from the tobacco company. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, you want to remove all the labeling from our cigarettes? Well, what's next? Uh, maybe it'll be, you know, sodas, and then it'll be this, and then it'll be that. So there's another way to identify a slippery slope. Oh, you're going to start here? Well, what comes after that? Slippery slope. Okay. Um, oh, our little Charmin bears. Grace, what's going on with our Charmin bears here? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized something looking at this. Oh, uh, you, you go ahead. No, I, I understand uh, now. Okay. Okay. Bad wagon. So, uh, I, de I think it might be false dilemma. Let me see. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh -huh. here, when they say false dilemma, it's that same thing as false dichotomy, where they're offering you. One, they're basically saying it's either this or that. 
right? There, there, there's, there's a lot more choices, um, right? Either way, you can't go wrong. Charmin, uh, vote ultra soft or vote ultra strong. Um, so putting that idea that there's a only two choices, right? That I'm only going to use Charmin toilet paper and I'm only going to use ultra soft or ultra strong. Uh, right. So there's a lot of different varieties out there. There's a lot of other uh, choices. There's a lot of other things you could even say about Charmin toilet paper, other than the fact it's ultra soft or ultra strong. So it's a false dichotomy, or in this case, a false dilemma. Same sort of idea though, right? If you're creating a dilemma for somebody, uh, you're putting them in, in a situation where they have to make a choice, right? Um, and, and it's a critical choice. It's a critical idea that they have to, to focus on. But if it's a false dilemma, it means that there's other choices that you are not presenting them with. So I hope that kind of clarifies a little bit. All right, moving along. Christiana, take a look here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much that one is going to be such a difficult gender on our son. Difficult reader. <laughs> he is always late mm -hmm. and never prepared. <laughs> he is also he is always. Mm. Hmm. Um. Is it a Ted one? The ad hominem to the person. Yeah. I believe it is. Let's take a look. Yeah. So, right. So it's saying there, I don't know how Mr. Thomas can be such a difficult grader on our assignments. He's always late for class, never prepared. He's always disheveled. So it's trying to compare. It's like, okay, so he's a sort of disciplinarian when it comes to their grading, right? We think of somebody as a strict grader as being sort of a, 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 a well-disciplined, very straight, very, you know, uh, um, put together person if they're going to grade you very strictly. Um, but that doesn't have anything to do with the fact of his appearance uh, or the fact that he's unprepared or the fact that he's disheveled, right? Two different ideas. In this case, it's about a person, so it's ad hominem, right? So good job. Okay, Sasha Gay, what about this one? So, exaggeration. I'm hoping it's an exaggeration here, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, you know, this is, is fine for, you know, humor, right? I mean, a lot of times, you know, you're not going to uh, encounter that maybe so much in a passage. You might, uh, you know, is sort of some type of appeal or uh, this is also sort of hyperbole. Right. That, that's another way you'll 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 hear it described where you make this this kind of over the top claim about something here. It's kind of a it's humorous. So, you know, in fiction writing and stuff like that, it would be OK. Uh, but that's certainly an exaggeration. Uh, you would also consider that to be hyperbole uh, when somebody is making those types of, of a claim. Uh, they're using one that's sort of humorous here, but there's other ones you can make where it's like a really exaggerated claim about something. All right. And Grace. What is the last? No, got two more. All right. People who wear glasses are smarter. Exaggeration? I think it's probably stereotyping, which is going to kind of annoy me. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Yeah. So again, you know, here it's 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 another hasty generalization uh, kind of idea, right? You're you're generalizing about a you know people who wear glasses are smarter. Um, so it's stereotyping. 
Um, it's kind of funny though, because just the same thing with New York drivers, uh, you know, one experience, uh, I, I kind of see where they're making the distinction. So here it's, it's a more general statement about a group of people, right? People who wear glasses. Uh, the hasty generalization about the New York drivers was based on an individual experience. So there's a little bit of distinction that they're making in the quiz there. So that one individual experience is going to be seen as a hasty generalization, where here you're commenting about a group of people. All right. So stereotyping. Uh, yes, yeah, so people who wear glasses are smarter. Okay. And 24, Christiana. True or false one here? Mm, okay, sure. True or false. False. I think it's going to be true. Yeah. So, you know, attacking the character. So a lot of, um, you know, logical fallacies probably kind of fall into two groups. Either you're just kind of unaware that you're doing it. Uh, and, and you're just kind of uh, ignorant to the idea that you're actually using them mm. or you're very specifically doing it to distract um, or change the subject. So um, that, you know, that's where they're going to be applied to manipulate mm. the um, argument to your favor or just sort of ignorant that you that you are in fact using it. So yeah, the idea of an ad hominem attack is then going to distract the audience from the issue mm -hmm. at hand. So, you know, there's somebody that's telling you that, uh, you know, you should not do this or that, and they're an expert in their field, but then you bring up the fact that they got divorced, right? Completely um, not part of the argument, but that's gonna distract the, the uh, audience from the, the main idea that they're presenting. Okay, and I think that's going to be the last one. Sasha Gay, what do we do here? <clears throat> Logical. And. Uh, Think logical and questioned. So it's uh, probably going to be rhetorical, I think. Let's see here. Yes, yeah, so remember we talked a little bit about that. So <clears throat> with your, uh, it falls mm -hmm. into that different types of rhetorical techniques. So you know the logical fallacies are are, are flawed reasoning. So that's circular logic. Um, uh, uh, you know the the, the the like the video. Those are all types of, of logical fallacies. But rhetorical also, like those appeals by celebrities, right? That's not necessarily a, a logical fallacy. It's not using bad logic, but it's using bad rhetoric because you're using the idea that some celebrity uh, endorsement of something is, is important. Okay, um, let's see here. So we'll stop that one. Um, and I have one more faulty reasoning. Okay, so let's give this one a try. Um, should be the same format here. And let's see how this goes. All right, uh, Grace, true or false statement here? Okay. Strong support gives enough evidence to, strong support gives enough evidence, strong support. Just awkward. True. Let's see. I think I know what they're going with here. Yeah. So strong support gives enough evidence to support the claim. So if, yeah. Um, okay. Let's keep going. I want to make sure I hide my answers here. Okay. Christiana. Here we go. Okay. What is an overgeneralization? Okay, overgeneralization. 
and that was up to you to all related to us. Making that is not supported by this. Please, conclusion of your other information. Um, um the last one the third one basic conclusions i think it's going to be the first one let's see yeah so general statement that writer applies to all related things so over generalizing right that idea um like i mentioned last week you know most people have two kidneys right that is a that is an accurate generalization most people right that's a fact even most people are uh, have two kidneys. Uh, you know, if you're if you're healthy and and everything, then then you should have two kidneys. All people have two kidneys. That is an over generalization, right? I can't apply that to everybody because there's other circumstances, right? You may have had a birth defect where you're only born with one. You may have had one removed because you had an injury, or you you know may have had uh, some type of kidney disease had to have one removed or cancer. So that's the difference in 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 a accurate. Um, uh, you know, logical generalization and an over generalization. So, but you know, that's that's the difference there. A general statement that the writer tries to apply to all related things. So, and again, looking for those absolute terms, right? Hide those. All right, Sasha Gay, what do we do here? in conclusion on opinions rather than information uh oh so you're okay so you're going with the third one yeah so that's close but it's making an inference that is not supported by the data so um that that's where you're where you're going to lack reasoning or logic drawing a conclusion about something that the data does not necessarily show And Grace, what about this one? What is a personal bias? The conclusion based on too little data. Making an inference that is not supported by data. Making the conclusion on opinion rather than information. Personal bias. Mm. Um, the last one yeah and this one's really hard because we're all human right um and so we that's where we kind of you know it's 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 hard for us to be objective a lot of the time about things because uh you know we have these personal opinions we and and, and things of that nature so uh that could be seen as a, a faulty reasoning if you let personal bias make a decision really this comes into play like we were talking about with our extended responses um, you have to kind of work against your personal bias when you read those two uh, passages, whatever they may be on, you know, and you may feel one way about it. Um, but does that passage offer a better or can you write about it in a in a, uh, a supportive way? Um, so that's where personal bias might come in. All right. And Christiana, let's take a look at this one. Forty reason during conclusion based on true data. A reasonable conclusion based on data and evidence. Oh, think opinion rather than information. Um, um, is it the, the first one? 
from the table. So a reasonable conclusion is based on faulty. The, what? Faulty reasoning is a reasonable conclusion is based on data or evidence. No, that is a yeah. Wrong. Because when I read that one, I said that one is out. It's either the first one. That, I didn't know. Yeah, I that, that one. Bad. Um, I, really, honestly, none of these work that well, but I would say that drawing a conclusion based on too little data could be seen as faulty reasoning. We're going to pass that one on by because that's not a very good question. Uh, <laughs> Sasha K, give this one a try. Um, Logical or over generalization? Let's see here. Over generalization, right? So, because yeah. my two rose bushes died, all rose Everyone. bushes will die. Um, yeah, so there's an over generalization there. Good job. All right, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> they all seem so correct. Logical uh, conclusion. I'll go for A. Yeah, it for the, be... oh. the last thing. Yeah, it's a logical conclusion, right? <laughs> so here, right, breaking mirrors causes bad luck. Um, you know, there's no evidence for that. Uh, you know, there, there's no reasoning for that. Uh, that's a superstition, right? We know that <laughs> before, right? Just like a black cat crossing your path, you know, that's a problem for me because I own a black cat. Um, so, yeah, so it's an illogical conclusion. It's like, ah, you don't have evidence to support that. <laughs> There's no logical reasoning in that. So, yeah, that's just a straight up conclusion. Okay, let's keep going here. Christiana, what is this? Okay, the candidate is too stupid. You know, the computer of China is an example of. Oh, uh, the last one. Personal bias, let's see. Yeah, so uh, that could also be seen as an ad hominem attack, right? Ken uh, mm -hmm. is so stupid he didn't know the capital of China, but <laughs> they're, um, you know, also, you know, language like that, stupid and, and stuff like that, that could, that could also lend to a personal bias. All right, Sasha Gay, what's this one? Logical conclusion. Is that what you're going with? Yes, in the first one. Okay. So, you know, think about acting rationally and reasonably, right? Logically. Um, those are all very similar, similarly defined words. Is someone refusing to ever go in the woods again because they once got a rash seem logical or reasonable or rational to you? So it's another way to look at it, a little more simple way, um, you know. So, yeah, th that lacks logic and reason. 
Um, so that's a really straightforward one. You know, I, well, um, uh, there used to be, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, well, here, here's a, here's a great one. So my brother-in-law, um, he's, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, and he refuses to wear a seatbelt, uh, because, uh, when my wife and, and him were, were younger, um, they were in a car accident. Their stepbrother was driving and he took a turn too fast and they rolled a car and he flew out the window. And by dumb luck, him actually getting ejected from the car probably saved his life because a, a, like a, a piece of a telephone pole came through the back seat where he had been sitting. Now, I don't know why any, you know, fireman or uh, uh, EMT would tell a kid, wow, if you had been wearing your seatbelt, you would have been killed. But they told him that. So from that day forward, he refuses to wear a seatbelt because of this one very specific instance where getting ejected from the vehicle saved his life. So that is definitely an illogical conclusion that every situation after that you're going to be safer by not wearing your seatbelt, right? That's an illogical conclusion because of this one very specific incident. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's how you look at logic and reasoning, sound reasoning. Does this follow through? Does this seem like sound judgment to use? So think about that when you look at your, your extended responses. All right. And race. Take a look at that one. Okay. An experiment is conducted to determine what physical properties identify a metal. One part of the experiment tested the melting point of a substance, an iron nail, a copper penny, and a piece of lead pipe were heated in an oven at 250 degrees Celsius. None of the metals showed any change. The conclusion based on the experimental data is that all metals have a melting point above 250 degrees Celsius. It's an example of a illogical conclusion over generalization. B. Yeah, it should be over generalization, right? Right, uh, yeah, so we tested uh, some iron, some copper, and lead, and none of them melted uh, at 250 degrees Celsius, uh, which is not that high, right? I mean, we cook, uh, oh no, 250 Celsius. Yeah, that is pretty high, <laughs> but still yet, um, none of the metals melted show any change. Uh, so all, right, remember, all, never, ever, if you come across that term, you might be dealing with an over or hasty generalization. All metals have a melting point above 250 degrees, no. Uh, we know that's wrong. Uh, mercury is basically liquid at room temperature, right? So that certainly has a, a melting point well below 250 degrees. Uh, aluminum, I think, probably also has a melting point below that. So over generalization. No, wait, maybe not aluminum. But certainly you cannot make that conclusion by simply looking at three uh, separate materials. Okay, and Christiana. What we do here? Many um, people into space is a waste of it's a waste of money. The space program is an expensive project that allows a few people to look at the edge from a fancy point. But most people would never get to see. We are spending way too much money to let this astronaut play, <laughs> play in space. Nothing useful has ever come from human space. Right. The government spent as much money on medical research mm. as it spread on space. Right. This would help a lot. <laughs> Mm. Hmm. Uh, 
Is it the last one? Personal bias, I should be personal bias. So this in and of itself wouldn't be a bad start to an argument, mm -hmm. but it lacks any evidence, right? It's simply stating an opinion here that it's a waste of money. Space program is expensive. You know, um, we're spending way too much. Astronauts play in space. Nothing useful has ever come from it. You know, mm -hmm. all of that is just asserting opinion. So that's personal bias, or, or you know, it could also just be say opinion based. Um, if you know, I was to you know make uh, an, an argument here, I could point out, right? You need some statistics or facts. You know, we spend so many billion dollars per year on space program. You know, this same money could be used to do this. Uh, you know, it could fund you know this type of research, or it could feed this many homeless people, you know, there, now you're putting an argument together with some facts and some data. Uh, so alone, we just have an opinion. So it's just personal bias there. So, you know, if there's some statistics, there's some facts to back that up. Um, also, they would need to refute the claim, you know, that nothing uh, has ever come from the uh, you know space flight. Nothing useful has ever come from human space flight. Uh, there's been a lot actually of, of technological innovation come about from that. Uh, cordless power tools, or you know, so you would have to show also maybe where you know not enough has been developed uh, to to make it worthwhile. Okay, and keep going. Uh, Sasha Gay, how about this one? Is it a logical conclusion? It might be overgeneralization. Let's see. Okay, illogical conclusion. I wasn't sure because it, it's got that language in there. You know, three people went to the restaurant, but all are sick. So, yeah, three friends ate at Spacey's restaurant last night and all are sick today. It's obvious the restaurant served them food with salmonella poisoning. Okay, so illogical. Well, we don't know what they're sick from. They might have colds. They're, he's just saying they're sick, um, you know, and uh, so it's jumping to a conclusion, right? That's, that's another way to look at it. It's like, well, they all went to the same place. They must have salmonella poisoning. Well, that's very specific. There's lots of different types of food poisoning for one, uh, but to say that, you know, they must have salmonella poisoning, that is certainly illogical, okay. And let's see, Grace, what are we doing here? Things were a lot easier for kids before cell phones were invented. For example, there weren't distractions like text messages or phone calls during school hours when kids were learning. They never had to worry if a picture they didn't want it posted, like the time I put on a ton of marshmallows in my mouth, showed up on social media for everyone to see. However, there's, there's curious issue of kids having cell phones and cyberbullying, kids are having a are having to deal with bullying issues because it is easy to test or send an email through phone and have it delivered to the victim. Parents really need to consider the cons of having a cell phone before they purchase one for their child. For example, of mm. Is it personal bias or 
it should be perfect for this. Let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah, so again, that's just a lot of opinion there. Um, nothing really fact-based. So that's something to look for here. Again, we could think of that as opinion. Um, you know, that, that's basically what personal bias is. So good job there. All right, and Christiana, what about this one? Okay. I to arrange all. The first one. The first so, one. It might be overgeneralization. Let's see. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I like this one movie. So I am going to rent all of his movies, and I am sure that I'll like all of them. Right. Um, that's a hasty generalization to make based on one, you know, movie with Brad Pitt. So overgeneralizing about the nature of. Uh, someone's work and Sasha Gay. This faulty reasoning, faulty reasoning, yes. yeah, right. So, uh, if it's not closely related to the claim or doesn't support. It. So also irrelevant, right? Irrelevant evidence. You could you could use either terms. Like if you point something out in a passage, it's like, you know, they they quoted this statistic, but it's unrelated to, you know, their their argument. And you could say that is faulty reasoning or that is an irrelevant evidence. All right, good job. Um, Grace, what is a claim? Mm -hmm. All right, that's Mrs. Evans. Um, C. A writer's position on an issue. A writer's message. Oh, come on. Okay. Hey. No, we know <laughs> writer's position on an issue or a problem, right? So that hierarchy there where we have an argument. Um, uh, and then you have claims to support that argument and evidence to support your claims. So a writer's position on an issue or a problem, um, right? That's that's disappointing. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> go though. All right, what is support, Christiana? Um, okay. Emotional reasons. Evidence that helped. The last one. Yep. So reasons and evidence that help to prove the claim, right? So you make that claim, you support the claim. The support is found in logical reasoning and evidence. Good job. Well, I'll make sure I didn't give us something crazy. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> uh, Sasha Gay. True or false? False. Yeah, it should be false. Uh, you know, we need to build a case for something. You know, it's tough for you guys because these passages are small. Um, there's not always a lot to, to, to work with here and you have limited amount of time. Uh, you, know, the, you know, heaping on evidence, the more evidence you can find, the better off you, you're going to be. Um, you could do that also in like I did with our uh, with the passage or with the response I did last time, where I really focused on the one that I was supporting um, and kind of trying to build a better case there, and then at the bottom, sort of pointing out you know some of the errors with the other passage. You have to address the two, but um, you know you could you could sort of focus on the one. Okay, and Grace, what we got here? A personal view or belief based on an emotion or interpretation of facts, opinion, factual claim, quotes, personal view, your personal view or belief. 
opinion. Yeah, opinion. And we live in a world today where we, where everybody wants, you know, I, you know, again, we're human. We want people to value our opinion, but we have a problem right now, particularly in this country, where everybody's opinion is not equal. And everybody wants their opinion to be seen as equal, but even opinions need to be somewhat supported. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of craziness out there. And, and, you know, we have these talks about freedom of speech and all this kind of stuff, which is fine. Everybody wants to be able to voice their opinion, but it's just that. It's a personal view or belief. It often is based on emotion or, you know, the way you particularly interpret certain things. Um, and you know, to be unbiased and to be objective, you have to look at as many facts as you can. Uh, and just asserting opinion doesn't get anybody anywhere. Um, so not all opinions are equal, um, whether, you know, a lot of people want to hear that or not. Okay, so good job there. Last one, Christiana. Okay. Let's all turn about the best that to make up an argument. Claim and support. Claim and support. Yeah. So, you know, and that's what you offer in your, your thesis statement, right? You make a claim. And you're going to assert a few items that you're going to use to support the claim. So, um, you know, I like such and such because of A, B, and C. And then in the body of your text, you get into details about A, B, and C. You know, there's reasons uh, that the support of your, your overall claim. So that's it. All right. So that good job, guys. I know a couple of those are a little wonky. Um, that second uh, um, part there was, you know, um, or that second, what am I trying to say? The, that, that second quiz was a little more specific to several items. Um, let me see here. Uh, can you give me one second? There's somebody knocking at the door and it might be maintenance. Give me one second. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, somebody trying to sell me uh, a uh, new electric bill. Uh, some <laughs> solicitors, uh, they were quite insistent on knocking though, so I had to get rid of <laughs> So um, how did it, uh, do you guys feel about it? Does that help some as far as understanding a little bit more about, you know, faulty reasoning, um, evidence and claims and how that all works together? Yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, I mean, you guys are doing really well, and I um, some of those are kind of tricky. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily get bogged down in details a lot with that. Uh, you know, again, focus on ones that you can easily identify. There, you know, there might be more than you know two or three in in a passage, but you're going to be able to see some, it's like, okay, bandwagon, look, there's, you know, there's a claim that, you know, everybody's doing something, so maybe I should do it too. Um, you know, look for other ones that, you know, are, uh, that you can question. And that's what I always come back to with, with reading and active reading. You know, the whole time that you're reading something, ask yourself about the claims they're making. Ask yourself about the reasoning. Does this, is the sound? Um, you know, and if it's questionable, can I identify, you know, the type of faulty logic and reasoning that they're using, right? So tomorrow we will work again on, we'll use that, those same uh, examples uh, from the passages that I have 
uh, from last week. And we'll work on, I think it was like number three, I think was that was the, uh, the next one available that we didn't look at. So we'll try another extended response tomorrow. Working on what we did today, as far as uh, a little better, the claims and evidence that we're looking at um, and how we can apply that to, you know, our uh, extended responses and maybe hopefully kind of speed them up as well. So you guys got any other questions? Is there anything else that we could do um, that you want some more help with as well? No. Okay. Now, um, I think, Grace, you said you're going to try to take it next week. Is that right? This week or next week. Okay, so we will plan on doing the extended response tomorrow. And I mentioned to Grace earlier, I don't know if you, you guys heard me, I found some other uh, like whole review kind of, um, you know, tests. Um, and we can go through maybe one of those on Wednesday and maybe one on thurs Thursday to give you a complete refresher on you know, the entire language arts thing. How does that sound? Good. Okay, all right. So plan on that tomorrow, extend a response. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll do some more general review, okay? Okay. Y'all right. have a good afternoon. Okay, right. thank you. Bye-bye.